Welcome to BSF Innovation Hub 2021 Grand Finale. I think in all of Europe we have seen a very vibrant activity. Fishing and aquaculture is having dramatic consequences. Have you tested the idea? Have you received feedback also on your hypothesis? So it's a simple yes or no question. Do you want a safer environment? Higher performance versus lower cost, you said. It's a lot of paperwork in waiting. The winners of the BASF Innovation Cup 2021 Grand Finale are Rebel Foods and Re Catalyst. But the winners today mean that at least two projects are going to get this uh, additional boost. Of course, I'm extremely happy, and we hope that we're in all the the countries where the jury is and where all the visitors uh, and viewers of the show are so that everybody can soon uh, try our, our great plant paste. BASF. We create chemistry. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Milos Urosevic. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning to you all. Welcome to BASF Innovation Hub 2022. Uh, welcome to Greece, a live event. This is just the first one in a row of six. We are covering 11 countries from Central and Southeast Europe. And we are going to crown all this with grand finals on Friday the 4th, exactly at, at noon Central European time on this very channel. Uh, to start in a proper manner, you already heard applause, but I would like to hear once again applause for you and for Jerry and all our participants. It's always good to start with, with an applause. So why are we here today? BSF Innovation Hub 2022 is a hybrid event, you already know that if you were watching us for the last fa uh, few years with everything happening live here in studio, but including our participants and jury members via video links from different locations. Uh, let's cut to the chase. After we received over 100 applications for all events, today we are hosting top five carefully selected innovators and startups from Greece who will present their innovations in front of our jury and, of course, you. We are giving them a unique opportunity to present innovative solutions to key environmental challenges of today in order to get further fundings. This year, we focus on renewables, covering the following categories, clean energy, smart transportation and farm to fork. Also, it is important for us to share how proud we are since uh, 2018, this organization, the number of participants, jury members and audience interest has grown rapidly from year to year. Okay, before we start the official part of the competition, let me say a few words about BASF itself. BASF is the world's leading chemical company with more than 111,000 employees who contribute to the success of its customers in nearly all sectors and almost every country in the world. Supporting the European Green Deal objectives, BASF has set ambitious goals to achieve net zero CO2 emissions by 2000. 50 because BSF creates chemistry for a sustainable future. This event is held in partnership with the Hellenic Association of Chemical Industries since its establishment in 1994. It is a full member of CEFIC, the European Chemical Industry Council, one of the largest and most efficient advocacy networks among the industry trade organizations in Europe and in the world. 
The production value of Greek chemical industry amounts to 2.5 billion euros and it directly employs 1,600 people. Greek chemical exports contribute to 12.1% of total exports and the Hellenic Ex Association of Chemical Industries is a strong support for important sectors of Greek economy such as food, metals, agriculture, tourism, etc, etc. <coughs> okay, now that we are all here uh, with uh, partners like this bound for success, innovation, lovers, let me say that, the, it's time to introduce the jury members and we're going to do it right now. They're all eminent professionals in their respective field with special skills to analyze and choose the best of most progressive ideas that will enforce humanity to move forward. The first member of our jury, our jury president, is Mr. Vasilis Gunaris, managing director of BSF Hellas. In his free time, when he is not working as an olive farmer, his many positions include working as a president of the aforementioned Hellenic Association of Chemical Industries and the present president of German Hellenic Chamber of Industry and Commerce. He studied agriculture with focus on marketing, business, and economics. Good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, Mr. Gunaris. Thank you, he is joined by Mr. Panayotis Karlatos, his colleague and Director General at Hellenic Association of Chemical Industries, a chemical engineer by education. Mr. Skarlatos has exact, uh, uh, an extensive experience in the industrial sector. Makes sense that he is also a founder and a managing director at SASTCAM Engineering, focusing on top-notch consulting services by high-level scientists for companies. Mr. Skarlatos, good morning to you. Before returning to Greece, many positions held by our, our next jury member included research staff appointments at the Center for Material Science and Engineering at MIT, Mr. George Nunesis from Democritos, National Center for Scientific Research. His research is mainly focused on structural and thermodynamic studies of nanostructured soft materials and biomolecules, and for his work, he had received many awards and distinctions. Good morning, Mr. Nunesis. Good morning, good morning. Truly honored to be part of this jury panel. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we are joining by, by our fourth jury member, Ms. Effie Lazaridu, Chief Executive Officer of Generation AG Greece. She is currently involved in a non-profit organization called the New Agriculture for a New Generation, committed to act as a catalyst for innovation in Greece, a Greek food ecosystem, while creating opportunities for young professionals. Good morning to you. Good morning and good luck to the participants. Thank you very much, Jerry. We're looking forward to hearing some of her well-known inspirational speeches. Okay, applause for the jury today. <laughs> and now bringing innovators into the game. Here are the Greece Top five, farm air, Intellig, Optimum's smart energy solutions, Thermolysis. Good morning. Good morning and Solmeyea. Welcome guys, I saw that you you can hear me right now. That's very good. That's a very good beginning. I hope you are ready to be smart, innovative, progressive, and above all, renewable. Let's start. Now that we are here and that we have met our team and our jury, Mr. Gunaris, I would like you to be so kind and greet and encourage our participants. It's always good to start with the support. Thank you, Miros, for the good introduction. And let's, ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Athens, Greece. I'm very happy to welcome you here today on our BSF Innovation Hub 2022 final event. Our competition in Greece takes place with the support of the Hellenic Association of Chemical Industries. We're excited that the competition has attracted a great interest from, from so many startups and young innovators. This competition is only the beginning of an exciting journey. 
Thank you for your attention and I wish all five finalists good luck. Exciting journey, you said. That's that's quite the that's quite right. Thank you, Mr. Gunaris, for uh, uh, starting uh, words. Uh, but we are missing something, and that's uh, before we start. We have to do it, and those are the rules. Our five th five teams from Greece will have. 10 minutes to showcase their idea. After each presentation comes the Q&A sessions. And this is very important for you, dear teams. During this time, jury gets to ask fast questions, which challenges both sides to be very precise and clear. After the question is raised, our participants will have exactly one minute, 60 seconds, to answer the question. But as you already know, a lot can be said in one minute. You just have to think carefully about your answer. Finally, after a 10 minutes break, which our jury members will use to brainstorm the ideas, consult and evaluate the teams, they will choose one theme to qualify for BASF Innovation Hub Grand Finals, which will be held here on Friday, 4th of November, exactly at noon Central European time at this very same channel. Our jury is juring objectively and transparently. If you were watching us for the last few years, you already know that. And these are the criteria by which they will be guided. Number one, does the submitted idea offer a solution directly or indirectly uh, for clean technologies and innovations that aim to improve environmental sustainability? Number two, how has the participant defined the problem that his idea solves? Number three, does the idea offers a new approach to achieving the objectives? Number four, is the idea adaptable to changes and can it be implemented in different surroundings? Number five, how the idea will further develop and how probable it is that the idea will be successfully implemented? Number six, is the individual or the team competent enough to develop the idea further and achieve the goal. Number seven, how well did the team present their idea? And finally, number eight, did the team manage to successfully answer the questions asked by the jury? Now that it's clear, having the pleasure of being the first finalist of the first day of the live event is Farm Air on a mission to accurately detect plant stress at early stage, allowing growers to minimize costs and optimize quantity and quality of yield. Farm air, according to the rules, you have 10 minutes to do your pitch. I'm going to ask you to put some of your presentations on wall, actually on screen, so that we can, we, that we can see that it works. We're going to wait a few seconds. OK, this is your presentation. This is the start? Yes. Okay. Pay attention. You're going to hear the beep to start. And after 10 minutes, if you pass 10 minutes, you're going to hear the beep that shows that it's at the end for your presentation. Are you ready? Get, ready. set, go. Good morning, everybody. And thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present our technology and company at Bass Innovation Hub 2022. I'm Samadis Diabatidis, a co-founder of Farmer, a plant stress management architect company established in September 2020, specializing in the early and accurate detection of biotic and abiotic plant stress. We are agronomists MRI. Plant stress is increasing production costs and is reducing the quality and the quantity of the final output. It by caused by abiotic factors like heat, cold, flood, drought, or imbalance of nutrients, or biotic factors like pathogens, uh, insects, and the uh, herbivores. Plant stress, especially biotic, like pathogens, cannot be seen in the early years of infection by the naked eye. Vegetation indices, ground sensors, plain use of thermal images can only assert the problem which is already or will be soon become evident. It is known in the academic world since the 80s that the first symptom of a stressed plant, any kind of stress, is the stomatal closure of its leaves and consequently the increase of the temperature. This can be captured by thermal cameras. The next stage is the decrease of the chlorophyll content and can be addressed by using multispectral cameras. 
And the last stage is when the symptoms become evident by the naked eye and can be seen, of course, by digital cameras. We managed to overcome problems like isolation of the soil and normalization of the results. We are combining visual and thermal images. We are using machine learning and AI algorithms in order to see what no one else can see. We can detect plant stress on a leaf level long before the onset of any symptom becomes visible to the naked eye. And as an example, in plant diseases, we can detect stress as early as two or three years ahead. Our patent has international ranking with direct application to agriculture and to the environment. Growers can have the time now to react to cure infected plants, to prevent contamination of the healthy field, as well as to better manage irrigation and the use of pesticides and fertilizers so as to ensure sustainable agriculture. They can also save up to 35% of the contamination cost in ISCA diseases, trunk diseases, and uh, leaf roll diseases. We are addressing mainly two market segments. Growers, which can use our platform either under end-to-end -end or our under, under our bring your own image services to identify stress. And agri-tech companies like UGVs, robots, smart tractors, greenhouses, etc., which they can utilize our technology in order to enhance their product offering and provide complementary services to their customers. Regarding our B2B segment, we are initially started by addressing the 7 million hectare, 1.1 billion vineyard global market, and we will gradually expand in almost every plant bearing leaves. Out of the total vineyard uh, growing countries, we have selected 10 based on proximity and significance. And out of those 10 countries, we have focused on 680 vineyard growers, which defines our initial serviceable obtainable market worth 32 million euros. This table reflects the potential from expanding into new crops. Only from soya beans, we can increase potential by 48 million hectares or an additional opportunity of 7.5 billion euros. Regarding competition, we don't have any direct competitors since no one until today provides early in agro-detection of plant stress. This table lists our side competitors along with their features and compare them with farmers' offering. As of this year, we are providing a fully integrated platform to growers. Through our platform farmers, they can have access to weather data, soil data, low chlorophyll content, digital surface map. They can navigate to the problematic plants using their mobile or their tablet. They can down download a comprehensive stress detection report to uh, share with uh, the scientific team. And last but not least, they can enjoy our patented early and accurate detection of plant stress. Also, as of this year, we have provided to them uh, on a pilot base stress classification into the five main categories. Fungal diseases, trunk diseases, heat stress, water stress, and toxicity. This is a showcase from one of our customers. You can see images on the same trunk in 2020, 2021, and 2022. We have accurately identified stress all of these years, and in August it revealed the problem. It shows the uh, known ISCA pattern on its leaf. It was a trunk disease. Since establishment, we have had 23 all paying and satisfied customers among the most renowned winemakers, wine nurseries, cooperative, and individuals. Now, regarding our whole sales market segment, the possibilities are endless. We can cooperate with tractors, UGVs, and UAVs to provide targeted fertilization and spraying, and with vertical farming and greenhouses to provide early detection of plant stress. A few days ago, ago, we entered into an MOU with a greenhouse from Israel, Fermata, and we are looking forward to start working with them on integrations. Going forward, we want to develop new features in order to constantly stay ahead of competition, to address additional market and weather out seasonality by utilizing the Southern Hemisphere, to work on integrations with agri-tech companies and to prepare for the launching of new plants, new crops. And for this reason, we have initiated our sitting round to implement our business plan. 
Last but not least, let me present to you our competent and highly dedicated team. George, my co-founder, is a PhD candidate, and he, is the, he has developed both the patent and the AI software. Yanis Evangelis are concluding our development team, and worth mentioning here is that everything, including our platform and landing pages, are developed in-house. Nicole has been helping us developing our B2B clientele, and our scientific advisors, Elias and George, are providing the valuable know-how on the agronomy front. This is concluding my presentation, and I'm open for any questions you may have. Thank you, Farm Air. That was shorter than 10 minutes. Jury members, please raise your green cards if you have a question for Farm Air. Okay, let's hear the question from uh, Mr. Nunesis. Yes, uh, good morning. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, two questions, actually, very quick ones. One concerning the technology, your visual and thermal cameras, are they monitoring entire fields, parts of a field, or individual plants? Okay, have you heard the questions? Excuse me, can you repeat? If, if the, the, the camera are used? If the, camera if the cameras, are yeah, the detectors that you're using, are they monitoring entire fields? Uh, individual plants or parts of a field, randomly? They are uh, monitoring the, the fields. We are, we are using drones currently in order to capture and they have the surveying of the fields. And uh, they can be applied, as I said, to any, uh, to any crop. Currently, we are addressing uh, vineyards. Have and, I understood correctly is, your question? Yeah. Yes. And, and my second question is, when you make such an important claim that you can detect stress uh, three years in advance, has this been based in some kind of randomized uh, trials approach? Uh, your technology versus uh, a, a different technology or what the, the, the farmers and the, the growers are using? Uh, no, it is. It is has been tested several uh, years through the uh, PhD research of uh, of my co-founder. Has been tested before we have uh, commercialized that. And as I saw in the in the showcase, uh, it is uh, accurately, and uh, we can identify this because uh, Ischia disease uh, first of, uh, of all initially it comes from uh, the DNA of, of the plant and uh, it's expressing its symptoms uh, after two or three years and can only be seen by thermal cameras. Thermal cameras combining AI and machine learning, not just playing thermal uh, images. Thank you. Have, okay. I, have, have I asked, answered your, your question accurately? Yes, yes, Farmer, you have, you have uh, Mr. Vasilis. I, th I thought that I saw your green card. Yes. Okay, th thanks uh, for the very interesting presentation and uh, that they can support uh, the Greek agriculture in the future. Uh, Farmer is based and follows a preventative approach uh, that um, can stop er in early stages uh, diseases and following tailor made uh, applications. I would like to ask if you uh, have calculated the cost benefits uh, from your experience, from uh, the application that we have uh, 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 right now in, in, uh, in your customers. Uh, and uh, 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 this is the first question. And the second is, uh, if uh, any farmer, non-professional farmer can use this, uh, this uh, application. Mr. Gunaris, I'm going to ask you just to ask a first question because he has uh, one minute question, to answer your question. question. If there are, if there are um, uh, cost benefits. Cost uh, benefits, uh, for, farmer, yes, uh, cost benefits yes, uh, uh, yes, considering, considering the, the, the users right if now using Calculations your... on cost benefits, yes. Of course, uh, we have a calculation of cost benefits uh, based on international uh, papers and studies. Uh, particularly for uh, trunk diseases like uh, uh, ISCA or PILS, uh, which is uh, similar in, in the United States, and uh, 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 leaf roll uh, disease. 
And uh, we know that this, they are increasing the cost of uh, production by 2,000 uh, euros per hectare per year without taking into consideration the replacement of uh, the plants because this disease cannot be cured. You have to replace the plants and to wait uh, until uh, the new crops uh, will uh, yield the uh, uh, fruits, which is uh, roughly three years. So, so this, uh, are without technology and uh, depend on which uh, service uh, our uh, subscribers will pay, they are going to save net 35%. Uh, this is uh, based, on, as I said before, on academic studies and the uh, actual uh, costs. Uh, regarding other diseases, it depends uh, on the cost of, uh, of the grower and on the kind of the disease. Okay, farmer. Mr. Gunaris, your second question was? If, if the uh, non-professional farmers can use, let's say, this uh, application, because in Greece we have a lot of uh, um, non-professional yes. farmers. Uh, of course they can use because uh, we can identify the, the stress uh, 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 points. Uh, they can navigate to particular uh, uh, stressed uh, uh, plants uh, and, and they can use the, their agronomist, of course, in order uh, to, to cure. Uh, as I said, we are the MRI of the, of the agronomist because we are identifying the problem, but like uh, parallelizing with uh, the medical, uh, let's say, sector, we can identify the issue, but the neurosurgeon is going to take action. Uh, we are not taking actual uh, action at the time, but we are giving actionable data. Mr. Gunaris, are you, you pleased with the question? Uh, yes. With the answer? Very yes. Much. Okay, let's get back to the jury. Okay, Ms. Efi Lazaridu has a question. Um, I was, uh, I'm interested to um, hearing about uh, cases in uh, wine growers where your um, technology has helped and how many years have they been using it? Just, you know, refer to a couple of cases. Yeah, uh, as the case I showed in the presentation, uh, one of our first uh, customers, we identified uh, successfully the ISCA disease after uh, monitoring three years uh, uh, these fields. Uh, we have also identified fecal diseases and toxicity, uh, water stress, uh, and low chlorophyll uh, content in uh, uh, more or less all of our clients, all of our 23 clients. Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have been established in 2020. Uh, in the first year, we had uh, two customers, uh, in September 2020, so in August, we had already two, two paying customers. and. Uh, and uh, 2021, we had 17, and uh, this year, uh, 18 customers. So we have a lot of cases, and a lot of examples, a lot of samples, and we have identified a lot of uh, uh, issues, yes. And, and just one more question. This is, this, um, these customers are on a, let's say, membership base. How do you, what is the, let's say, your, your commercial um, strategy? Uh, we are on, paying, on a paying basis. Uh, we have uh, actually two uh, kind of uh, services, end-to-end uh, -end service, and uh, we are charging per year, uh, per hectare. Uh, we are taking care in, under this service, uh, the photo shooting of the field. And we have also our Bring Your Own Images uh, service, uh, where uh, the grower has to have uh, a, a drone with, uh, equipped with a dual camera, thermal and digital camera and uh, they can upload the, the data to the platform in order to, to get the, the same results. Also, it's charged per the hectare per year, of course, on a different, uh, with different price. Thank Ms. you. Any more questions? Green cards? Okay. Mr. Panayotis Karlatis. Okay, thank you for the presentation. It was very interesting. I am not an agronomist. Uh, we have uh, put a more simplistic question. Uh, you collect from an area uh, where there are vi vineyards, etc., uh, uh, a lot of data, as far as I understood, that you keep your database, and uh, based on that, you consult the farmers. Uh, is there any possibility for your project uh, to make conclusion for the broad area? based on the samples that we have from the farmer in this area, suppose that the Greek authorities came to you to ask to support them how to, how to make the policy for, the, for this uh, area. 
Of course, of course, we can do that uh, given uh, the GDPR policies and so on and so forth. But we can give a conclusive, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, image of, uh, of issues uh, per, per area. Uh, we can cooperate also with the uh, insurance uh, companies in order to uh, be able to provide uh, uh, remuneration based on actual damages. Uh, we can do a lot of things. Definitely, we can do a lot of things and can help also. Uh, ministries and, and countries uh, addressing issues. Interesting. Thank you. Okay, Jerry. Members, any more questions? No, no more questions. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Farm Air. Thank you for your presentation and for your time that you have spent with us. Now we go to the second theme. Second theme is Intellig has put a lot of effort into developing a cloud-based building energy management system in a form of unique self-learning and self-adjusting software as a service tool. Intellig team, hello, good morning. Yes, put some of your presentation on the wall so we can see that it works actually. We're going to wait for a few seconds to open the presentation. Good. It has, it has opened. You have 10 minutes starting now. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Sartimides. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Intelli, the company that is based in Athens, Greece, since 2018. Uh, what I will present you today is um, CBEMS. Uh, CBEMS is the self, the first, uh, in our opinion, always self-learning and self-adjusting building energy management system based on artificial intelligence. So, trying to. Hmm. <clears throat> Regarding the company, a few words. The company develops products, provides service, engages in research in the field of energy transfer environment. It was, uh, as I mentioned, it was founded in 2018. It has two co-founders. We have four full-time, four part-time members. We have been able to achieve major awards, uh, starting with the Seal of Excellence from the first year of its establishment in 2018. We have been able to get funded by European Union for the hardware and the software itself multiple times, participating in different European projects, being one of the first teams uh, to uh, uh, to get in the Elevate Greece, while right now we're also members of the EU Digital SME focus group on smart cities. Now, the team itself, as I mentioned before, we have high expertise, uh, four persons uh, with uh, four PhDs and uh, four, four part-time, but even more, we have a very good team uh, of advisors and mentors, starting from our uh, uh, from the president of um, Business Angel Slovenia, and uh, people that are in the market, as well as people that uh, are uh, part of VCs and so on. Uh, what we are looking forward is to be able to uh, become a global player in smart city solutions by 2027. Now, regarding the project itself, well, we know that uh, energy right now, and even before, I would rather say, is number one problem, and especially uh, the energy consumed by buildings, which is number one sector, and this corresponds 40% in the European Union, 36% correspond of this on CO2 emissions, of course. But half of it, we would be able to avoid it if we would be able to have automations, especially in buildings like uh, shopping center offices, schools, hotels, and industrial in general. Industry is one of the, uh, actually what we have seen, uh, the heaviest uh, uh, energy intensity and where our system would be able to bring uh, very good results, which has done already. Now, about uh, 60, 70, 80 percent of this uh, uh, is going through the, what we call the HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and lighting. And uh, this is an emerging market of the building energy management system tools, which is uh, right now is uh, on the 6.5 billion. In European Union is 1.4 billion. And then the four markets that our company is uh, operating, which are uh, Greece, Belgium, Spain, and Luxembourg, is on 200 million, and uh, it is uh, projected uh, to become uh, in uh, 2028 a 16 billion market, just the BEMS tool. Uh, we're not talking about the smart buildings, which is much uh, larger as a market, 
uh, with an annual increase of uh, 12 percent and that shows that there is an increasing interest regarding these tools to be able to apply it in buildings now what makes us difference of course what makes us difference is the fact that we are making use of cloud technology so we are the first ones that they are making use of cloud-based self-learning adjusting bems which is powered by the use of artificial intelligence algorithm in this slide you can see that we have the conventional bms actually it's not B B e -MS. B e -A -MS is building energy but what is existing right now all over is a control system which is a building management system but there is no energy optimization that means we are making this and we can see at the same time connect the buildings and we are able to offer a software as a service tool to uh, the building owners that can bring a 40 percent average energy efficiency this is a huge number uh, we have been able to apply this in different kinds of buildings and we have clients and i will show you from different kinds of sectors now this has been able to be patented and uh, it has been able also to be uh, published in a very reputable uh, scientific journal says it's the uh, one of buildings now this is the back end uh, this is the back end that shows in much detail uh, where the building owner or the building manager or who is ever uh, who, who is the one who made the contract with us is able to see in his own platform on real time and you can see here on very much the details that exist along with the different the monitoring and of course uh, the the billing of uh, uh, the different uh, rooms that are the system takes place we are following a business to business model and that means that uh, our clients are in the first case, the BEMS consultants, which are engineers and so on, the system integrators, companies like ESCOS, and the municipalities in case, for example, that exist national costs like here in Greece, uh, which is the Electra one. Now, how we make revenue is by uh, charging on a license fee per BEMS. And, uh, and if it is necessary, we are able also to provide the hardware unit price, so which are also regarding the hardware itself, which means the sensors. Uh, in the, uh, the, there are also two uh, more cases that uh, if the, there is, is, is a big client, then we can make an agreement based on the fee, on the percentage of the energy savings on billing. We have been able, as I mentioned before, to test it and uh, to have clients and to show to see that the simple payback period is very fast, really very fast. It's between three to nine months, depending, of course, on the building complexity and size. So this is a pricing monetization scheme that we have four different kinds of packages that we offer to our clients. And these are the basic standard advanced and premium. It is based on the fact that on the number of data points, number of data points, we mean the number of uh, sensors along with their parameters. So we say less than 100 points as the one of the basic. That means more or less like 20, 25 sensors per building. We have been able at the same time to see depending on the square meters of the building and, and uh, the number of sensors that it is necessary. So we are able to make an economic offer straightforward. And actually, just a, a half an hour ago, we did that for the lighting for 16 buildings for a big municipality in Greece. Now, as I mentioned before, we are technology providers, but the point here is that this is an emerging market and it's really not a, a, a regulated one. And uh, so we are able to, uh, because the market uh, has to work out, we are uh, trying to uh, offer also possibly some other kind of services that we might didn't have to, have to or didn't want to, but to be able to sell our product, we are doing it. But at the end of the day, we are technology providers and that means that we are the ones who are making the software as a service solutions for any kind of big companies like, like uh, uh, Snyder Electric, Siemens, and so on, that they would like to employ our own uh, our own software or and take it to the um, companies, industrial companies, and so on. So what we do achieve with our software is the fact that uh, because we are making use of cloud technology and we are not going through any kind of cable, so we avoid any digging in the walls and so on. We have a lower installation cost of 25%. And at the same time, due to the fact that we are making use of the cloud technology compared with what exists right now, edge computing, and we are making the, the whole use of the cloud computing, we have 40% uh, uh, of uh, energy savings. At the same time, of course, 
we are uh, dealing with the, uh, we are fulfilling uh, a number of different uh, United Nations uh, objectives, like number three on good health and well being, number seven, affordable and clean energy for everyone, number nine, of course, very important industry innovation and infrastructure, number 11, sustainable cities and communities, 12, responsible consumption and production, and of course, more than everything, possibly the climate action. Now, we do have some competitors, not a lot. Uh, the company that we have been able, at least in our own opinion, to be to see that uh, makes uh, something close to what we do is Enerbrain, who makes use of uh, cloud technology, but actually does not have a platform that unifies the different devices and protocols as we do. And this is a global one. And it doesn't make, of course, use of artificial intelligence. And in that way, it's not possible to achieve this high energy savings that we do. The rest of the companies are here in the table. They do a few things without going uh, in the artificial intelligence use and this high energy saving, as I mentioned before. Now, as I mentioned, we have a traction. We have been able to work uh, right now with at least uh, 20 buildings uh, in uh, different countries. And uh, we are actually right now in a very a great period because we are dealing with different kinds of municipalities in Greece, with different kinds of, uh, with the hotel industry, which is actually very, very important for us. And I would rather say also for the for Greece, but not only, especially for countries that they have a lot of their, the, of, of their growth uh, based on the, the tourism, uh, because it is a sector that needs a lot. And uh, we have, um, uh, in, uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, different pilots also running in the European yeah. Union. And the European Union that has recognized this is actually right now in the process of uh, uh, further recognizing our tool by the EGTR. And to be Kim able Intellic, to... this was the mark of 10 minutes. I would kindly ask you to finish with your presentation. I'm going to give you yes. 30 seconds more. So. You had you had ten minutes. If you can do it in thirty so, seconds, thank you. Yes. So this is the last one to slide. So, so the, we are also in the process of the seed funding, and the, and the, we are going through a, a one million mark for the seed funding, uh, since we have a very great growth in different kinds of parts, as this uh, can be seen here. We have already achieved the first part of 2022, and we are in the second part. We have achieved major awards in different kinds of competitions, and uh, this is the second year in this competition that we have shown an upgrade of our system. And we're looking forward to answer to any questions that you do. Okay, have. okay. Thank you, Tim Intellic. Jerry, it's time for you to sum it up and ask questions. Any green cards? Okay, we have uh, three green cards. Let's start with the lady, Ms. Efi Lazaridu. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, so you, you mentioned you have traction. So I was wondering, are these uh, already paying clients or these are, uh, you're still in the pitching, uh, let's say, process? No, we are in the paying class. So we have uh, um, just uh, actually next uh, uh, Friday, we're submitting a big proposal for a big municipality that we are also the supervisors of the project itself. And uh, we are talking about uh, 13 schools and uh, one uh, gym. Uh, so it's uh, 12,200 square meters. We have uh, three industrial uh, companies. Uh, one is cosmetic, two are, um, uh, they are in total 10,500 uh, and 4,800 square meters. Uh, two are in the south of Greece, they are an export fruit company, the other is a cosmetic one. Um, so, I'm so sorry, we, we just, have... just to clarify, these are, these are already paying clients of yours? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. And how, for, uh, how long have you been uh, supporting them? Actually, we just started. We started in August uh, because we've... Uh, we had to finish a great part of the of uh, we finished our pilots in February. In March, we did get the okay from the European Union regarding the patent. And the end of uh, July, we did get the second okay from uh, for the patent. And we have been able uh, to uh, 
also to make the contract uh, in uh, January 2022 with a company in the United States to be able to make use of the open source platform that we, it, is, uh, it certifies uh, the homologization, homogenization of the different devices and protocols and uh, to take uh, our own, let's say, code and uh, transfer it to uh, this platform. Uh, so it's uh, since the uh, um, middle of August that we've been going through this and uh, with the new calls that exist either in European Union or national ones or individual ones right now. Uh, today so we are the, submitting... The, the, system, the, the system has already been uh, installed in those buildings and it's working right now. It's operating. Yes. Yes, actually, uh, you see that there are different kinds of cases. One is that, that we are proceeding with our own hardware. Yes, uh, uh, the hardware that we are actually purchasing and where uh, it is installed by the technicians and using also the software. Whereas in the other case, we had the Siemens, let's say in the cosmetic industry, we had a Siemens uh, software and we have uh, taken it out and we substituted with our own one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I saw, I think I saw Mr. Vasilis Gunaris had a question. Yes, yes. we have three more green cards. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, it's, it is a very interesting uh, uh, your proposal. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, what is the average cost of uh, of your proposal f for a building, and uh, what is the time that pays off? Well, the point is we have been able to calculate that uh, we need, for example, every 25 uh, square meters a sensor uh, because we need to be able to have a stable wireless network. On the other hand, uh, uh, it's not the same exactly if it is a building which is an industrial one, which is energy intensive, it has different kinds of uh, temperature changes inside the building compared with a, a hotel building, for example. Yeah. Uh, so they we do analyze first the system itself to see and then we can uh, see how many how much it would be the cost of it but right now what we are doing in a collaboration with the hotel industry in greece uh, uh, is to be able to offer them a unified uh, software as a service tool for all kind of uh, hotel buildings but actually more in concrete for four and five star uh, hotel buildings, uh, any kind of, let's put it like this, based just on their existing system, as you mentioned. But um, in general, that's, that's, uh, term, one, that's one minute. That's one minute past. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I hope you are satisfied with the answer within yes. this 60 seconds. And any more questions, Mr. Gunaris? Yes. Uh, do you think that? Uh, uh, this proposal should be part of uh, in funding programs. Yes, because what we have been able to, we have not finalized it 100% yet, is the fact that uh, we are uh, uh, finalizing the platform. Okay? Uh, okay, we have been able to uh, test our own platform with our own thermostat, but it was based on one system. So if you would like to be in another building, you would have to go in all over again. Whereas right now we're making use of a unified platform and uh, we have tested it, uh, we have, but we need to be able to further test it, yes. So I would rather say it is for funding. Yes. Mr. Nunesis, you had a question? Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. A again, about technology, I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, first of all, uh, your, your IP, it has to do with the data analytics approach, AI for the data you are produce, that is being produced, or the self-adjustment, or is it has to do with the edge computer? Where is your IP on? Uh, our IP is on the cloud computing, it's on the self-adjusting self, uh, um, um, self uh, system. Uh, which is based on artificial intelligence algorithms. So when we are having the IP, it is a process. It's not uh, the hardware or the software itself. It's the fact that we are able to make use of our own algorithms based on artificial intelligence. So to be able to conceive this energy savings by making use of cloud technology. That's how it is written, by the way. Yes. Uh, so, so it is an AI-based uh, and machine learning-based uh, IP. Uh, 
and, yes. and w what I want to, to say is uh, oh, the data that you get up on the cloud from your clients, the ownership of this data, how are you negotiating this? Are it's theirs or yours? Uh, actually, the data, it's, um, um, we don't have any, let's say, we do have some interest of so the data, of course, because data is money, so to put it like this. But uh, it's under a different kind of uh, agreement between us and the contractor, so it depends. Uh, if it is uh, something that uh, might create problems, then we do see the solution itself. But uh, in general terms, we keep the data for some period of time and uh, then we delete the data. Okay. One more, one more very quick one. For, the, for, for your edge uh, computing applications, are you going to require 5G telecom system, uh, networking or not? Don't make any edge computing. Actually, uh, we are your... no. We don't make any edge computing uh, applications. It's everything is based on the cloud. So I mean, in the future for your sensors, I mean, when when you are going to be uh, synchronizing edge and, and 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 cloud is not right now in your in your goals. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your 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 question. If we will. In the future, if, if in the future you will be uh, uh, utilizing your sensors for edge computing applications as well, the, the, the sensors you are installing right now. Well, um, actually, these are not our sensors because we are buying now the sensors. Although we have manufactured our own ones, but it's more profitable to make use of diff uh, for the same sensors, which are uh, cheaper. Uh, but uh, we haven't thought about it yet, to be honest. Right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scarlatos, I think I saw your green card. Yes, you can ask the question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. I would like to ask you, make you a question about the application in the industry. You mentioned a thematic industry, specific 10,000 square meters. Can you uh, appear some figures from uh, your proposal? Uh, to yes. this, uh, let's say, Actually, average it, industry yeah, for Greece, yeah, yeah. Uh, spending the uh, rate of return of the investment, that's... Um, I can give you these two cases very fast. One was the cosmetic, they had a problem regarding the pollution, the air pollution, and the efficiency of the system that they have just installed in uh, May 2022. They called us and they said that we saw the plans and uh, we make uh, our suggestions and uh, to go through more detailed monitoring and to put some new devices, some new sensors in our own system. And it has been able to increase the thermal efficiency because the existing system was not really making optimization, but rather it was making um, management of the system. Uh, the second case was regarding the fridges, okay? Uh, fridges are fruit export companies, they have big fridges and they have really big, uh, uh, a lot of money spent on that. So we had to control them, digitalize uh, the environment and to be able to install the right uh, uh, sensors in the right places and uh, to be able to have the right temperatures whenever it is needed and not just to have a constant uh, load uh, because constant load means a lot of times a waste of time. And actually, we just okay, had that, another proposal. That was, that was a minute marker. That was a minute marker. Mr. Scarlatos. Uh, my question was to give some figures from the cosmetic industry for this specific plant. What is the uh, investment that you proposed to them and what was the rate of return of the investment? Two words. Yes, yes. Uh, the investment, they have invested 1.25 million on a B BMS system. And uh, we have been able to achieve a 6% in the first month of operation, uh, which is quite a lot for them. And uh, we are still in the process because it's just, we just installed it in September, um, end of September in, the, okay. in their, uh, the company. Thank you. Thank you. No more questions from the jury? Thank you. Based on the screen, uh, thank you, thank you, Intellect team. Uh, I, I hope they, our jury didn't have, uh, didn't give you a much of a headache.
at the end no, with, no, the, no. Uh, with a lot of questions at Q&A session. Okay, we're going moving to a third theme, Optimum Smart Energy Solutions, which is calling for a complete transformation of how we produce, transport and consume energy. It, it's, it's an umbrella solution, a novel customer-centric platform uh, that turns small and medium mm. customer consumers into next generation microgrids. Uh, hello, good morning. I'm going to ask you to put some of your presentation on screen yes. so that we can see that it works. You can put yep. it in a full screen before we start. Can you see my screen in full? Yes, thank you very much. 10 minutes starts now. Good morning, everybody. My name is Angelina Bintudi, and this is Optimums. So, imagining a carbon neutral future, it actually makes us wonder. What's the big fish to catch? Who's to blame? The answer is the energy sector because it is responsible for around 75% of the greenhouse gas emissions. The pathway is clear. We need to integrate more renewables and much, much more. Actually, four times the record levels that we had set already in, the, in 2020. However, the electrical grid, which is the biggest machine ever built by humanity, is not ready for such change. At the same time, if we take into consideration the electrification of transportation, this challenge to the grid becomes even greater. And then we think, okay, so reducing greenhouse gas emissions, doesn't it imply consuming less? Actually, no, because all these years, in the past two decades, we have active and successive, uh, successful efforts uh, to make more energy efficient and smarter consumption. However, if we do everything perfectly, and even if we do reach the goal of actually consuming 7% less, this will not be enough. Because actually net zero by 2050 requires huge leaps in clean energy innovation. Actually, massive renewables integration implies massive upgrades to grid infrastructure. However, this is not a solution because such a thing means immense cost and too much time, and we don't have it. The solution actually lies in one magical term, flexibility. Flexibility is essentially the aggregation of clean energy so that it can be supplied back to the grid whenever this is needed on demand. This can be supplied in three ways, all in all, storage systems, demand response, and electric vehicles, EVs. So essentially, aggregating renewables and flexibility assets, we actually form either microgrids, if everything is in the same geographical area, or virtual power plants, if they are dispersed. Nonetheless, to harvest this available flexibility from all these new and fancy technologies, proper energy management systems are necessary so that they can incorporate heterogeneous energy assets into one unified and fully controllable entity. And this is exactly what we did. We have created one framework for several applications. Optimum's energy management system is the brain for the next generation of microgrids and virtual power plants, VPPs. Optimum's essentially incorporates a highly diverse portfolio of energy assets. So we have renewables, electrochemical and thermal energy storage, EVs, CHPs, and controllable loads, for example, heat, heat pumps, HVACs, into one fully controllable, 100% decarbonized and reliable power supply. We are empowered by a powerful machine learning based forecasting uh, algorithm, both for generation and consumption and an adaptive multi-objective optimization engine. This way, we actually enable the optimal dispatch of all the aforementioned energy assets so that not only environmental goals are met, which is our primary goal, but also we optimize the economic operation of the microgrid of VV. Optimums actually has been designed with its gaze to the future. For this reason, our solution enables the participation in the so-called demand response schemes. By doing so, active support is essentially provided back to the grid, thus making available whenever necessary our flexibility. 
Optimums, as I said, is a horizontal size agnostic solution that can be applied to any kind or size of microcode VPP. Especially for the VPPs, the hidden flexibility potential of electromobility has incorporated into forming VPPs solemnly for, from EV chargers, from charging parks. And last but not least, uh, thanks to our very own and uh, house uh, built and developed hardware that can be installed uh, in microgrids and VPPs. This is an optional uh, thing. We can also be incorporated as we have done in the past with commercial solution. We actually provide decentralized and secure monitoring and asset and control. As a final remark for our own hardware, uh, we have our own proprietary local controllers. So self-learning and self-adaptation is enabled in order to mitigate any stochasticity caused errors uh, in the forecast of uh, renewables or the load. Here we can actually see the two main dashboards, each one of them, it has a lot of sub pages for the microgrids on your left and uh, VPPs on your right. There are several technical innovative features that actually bring us ahead of the competition to name a few. Uh, regarding microgrids, we support both grid connected and islanded operation, including the transitioning to be seamless. Uh, our solution also enhances the system resilience. So actually this makes us very, very suitable for specialized applications, for example, hospitals. Regarding VPPs, uh, Optimums actually creates them. So through dynamic clustering of assets, we are able to exploit their full potential. So therefore we are not mitigating uh, and we are mitigating all problems regarding RES cartel or actually putting users outside of their comfort zone. Um, last but not least, uh, regarding the VPPs based on uh, EVs, we actually support the future, which is not only the optimal charging, which is V1G, but also the grid supporting by directional operation V2G. Uh, and one final uh, remark, which is actually one unique feature that doesn't exist in the competition is uh, has to do with demand response. Uh, whenever this is applied to small and medium customers, it has actually been proven that it is very, very susceptible to fail. And we wanted to fix this. Therefore, we actually uh, have our very own matchmaking algorithms so that we can actually fulfill a DR request, even in the most volatile conditions, which are the uh, re um, resi uh, residential uh, parts. All these features actually uh, have been published, uh, uh, that I mentioned before, have been published in high impact scientific journals, proving their uh, innovative natures. However, these are not just scientific stuff. We have actually put them in the real world. And this has actually gained the attention of large market players uh, because of the successful demonstration of our frameworks in various locations in Europe, namely Greece, Cyprus, Spain, Portugal, Sweden, and the UK. Uh, the competition, as you can see over here, uh, there are several, uh, these are all of our features, and even though they can be found in the big market players, however, all of them, they cannot be found in one horizontal uh, solution. Last but not least regarding this final point is the fact that we tried to be as interoperable as possible. Therefore, we are compliant with all the open protocols, for example, open ADR for demand response, OCPP, and of course, all the uh, hardware related uh, um, protocols regarding the communications. Uh, the market, well, the idea uh, of Optimums actually bloomed from the current and future needs of two distinct and rapidly emerging markets. Uh, for example, as you can see, the microgrid market, which is around 25 billion by 2027, uh, 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 will have a big focus on off-grid system. And this is why, for example, we created the islanded operation uh, support uh, within Optimus. Uh, on the other hand, the VPP market, which is quite newborn, as you can see, it will uh, reach around 6 uh, billion. This one will be uh, driven not only by the industrial segment, but also by the residential and the demand response. And this is why we have created the features of demand response support based on open ATR and of course the matchmaking. Optimums is uh, mainly a business to business uh, service provider. Our framework currently is being uh, provided so in the software as a service uh, format, while right now we are developing the platform as a service uh, through hosting AWS, which is a cloud, uh, a secure cloud service uh, uh, platform. Our focus right now is mainly on small and medium scale aggregators and commercial uh, buildings that are actually primarily uh, located in Greece and Cyprus. Uh, while 
while at the same time we are focusing on expanding to new uh, markets that we already have successful pilots within the next uh, five years. Uh, our business model actually has five uh, uh, revenue streams, microgrid, VPPs, electromobility, net zero energy buildings, and of course, consulting services. Uh, given the nature of uh, the offered services, our gross margin actually exceeds 90%. And uh, last but not least, uh, taking into consideration the fact that all of our solutions, these are not concepts, these are not simulations, they have been developed, they have been tested and demonstrated in the real world. Therefore, it is estimated that Optimums will generate positive net results even from the first year of operation. And actually the first year of operation is now. We are pretty young. We were born in April, 2022. We are a spin-off of the Center of Research and Technology, Hellas, and more specifically, the Information Technology uh, Institute. Uh, Optimums was born out of uh, several European Horizon uh, projects. This is the team of the founders. We are three technical research associates on your left. And we are we have the pleasure of having two senior uh, researchers, uh, Dr. Dimos Ioannidis and Dr. Dimitrios uh, Jovaras, to guide us business-wise. Uh, Tech-wise, we tried to cover all uh, the aspects of what we do. I am responsible for microgrids and VPPs, Lambros Iglakis for electromobility, and Christos Timplalexis for machine learning. Okay, Optimus team, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, 10 minutes and thank 30 you. seconds for you. This was a fast, awesome. fast, fast presentation, but I would like to see <laughs> a good presentation, I think. Let, let's hear from the jury. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Mr. George Nunesis has a question. Yes, thank you so much for the presentation. Again, very exciting uh, new technologies and platforms. Uh, two very quick questions. Uh, you being a, a spin-off of SERF, uh, have you uh, completed uh, all your, um, uh, your contracts with SERF concerning IP ownership? Uh, and could you, yes. Could you get into these kind of details? Yeah. Yes, 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 I can. Uh, all the uh, Optimums, can I ask you? Can are... I ask you to turn off your presentation, please? To just uh, yes. thank you very much. No, you want no. to see me? Yes, okay, thank I'm you. Here. <laughs> yes, uh, all the uh, IP uh, because it was developed uh, within the European Research Project, uh, project has been transferred from CERF ITI to Optimums. This was uh, a preliminary step even before we were founded so that uh, we are all uh, in the clear. Do uh, you want to know specifics regarding... No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, my next question comes following this. Are you talking to VCs, to venture capital? Yes. Are you are. talking with VCs? And what, what, yes. I, I, in, in your plans, you don't seem... Uh, so, um, uh, you did, at least you did not show us whether you are planning to raise money and in which direction. The reason why uh, that was not a priority was because we already started with contracts. We were founded uh, late April and we already have four new four contracts running. So we actually wanted to kickstart with uh, the contracts, actually develop also our work. However, we already talked with two venture capitals, but uh, this is something that will be explored in the next year. So we, all, we are already based uh, and we are sustainable with our own contracts. Customers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, let's see the jury. Any more questions? Mr. Gunaris, Mr. Vasilis Gunaris has a question. I have to, yeah, uh, you, you, have, you have muted yourself. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the very interesting presentation. I would like to ask if you can find support from the recovery and resilience plan in your proposal. Recovery. From the what? I'm sorry. Recovery and resilience plan. Plan. I heard recovering the next word I didn't uh, and hear. And the resilience plan. Ah, okay. Uh, this is actually within the next uh, uh, steps because right now, uh, regarding the assets that we have already incorporated, uh, are everything that has to do with uh, electricity. Uh, uh, 
thermal, we have solar thermal and energy storage uh, uh, thermal uh, energy, and we also have uh, CHP and power to gas. So this is not something that we have already implemented. Okay. Future steps. And any more questions? No, let's get back to the jury. Ms. Lazaridu, do you have a question? I haven't seen a hand or a mark. No? You, you, you have muted yourself uh, also. So. Uh, oh, okay, it's okay, it's okay, we hear you, we hear you. Okay. No, it's, uh, the presentation was very clear, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. That 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 thank was all. Much. We go. Thank you, uh, th thank you, uh, Team Optimums. We go to our fourth theme, thermolysis. In their plant, uh, they have uh, designed and manufactured a structured machine of advanced pyrolysis progress, offering energy recovery in every stage of the process and resulting in high energy savings. And now we will hear more about how behind this. Uh, process uh, team thermolysis hello good morning to you hello good morning I'm gonna ask you to put the presentation in the wall yes you can do it in full screen so that we can see it okay, you, okay. Uh, 10 minutes starts now good morning ladies and gentlemen first of all I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you our innovation machine, thermolysis. Thermolysis with a Greek theta in the beginning because it is made 100% in Greece, a machine that will change the way that humanity manages their plastic waste. The plastic is a fantastic material, but unfortunately, because of the undisputed functional properties, we use it so much and we create a huge problem, the plastic pollution pollution that affects the nature, the climate, and the human health. And this is because you cannot recycle mechanically all the plastic, especially when they are mixed and when they are multi-layers. Only in Europe, you see how many million tons of plastic we produce every year and how many thousands of them are entering the seas at the same time. And only 9% globally of waste, plastic waste is recycled. So we are targeting in 91% of the global waste market. So you can see that the potential is huge. Pyrolysis is a very well-known technology. It's a technology that converts the plastic waste into renewable sources, into oil-based products in an oxygen-free environment. It is all technology very well understood. But unfortunately, you need very large infrastructure to invest. You need high, high, aggressive amounts of capital, of investment, and operation cost. And even with huge amounts and large infrastructure of thousands of square meters, you cannot have an R&D balanced machine that can cover the 70% efficiency of the Red 2 and the new Red 3 of the European Union. Also, you understand that the demanding licensing for such huge plants is completely difficult to achieve. Then we made the question to ourselves, what if small plants were developed that small diversities could afford? And what if we can make this plant near the plastic waste instead of transporting the waste in the plants so we can save energy and CO2 emissions? And what if we can make one plant extremely energy efficient and we can overcome the difficult goals of the European Union. So thermolysis is a chemical recycling machine and we produce recycled carbon fuels. By continuously feeding the machine with plastic waste, we take out the oxygen, we increase the temperature in 400 degrees and the plastic degradates, become gaseous and then we distill this and we take the recycled carbon fuels. And why you can choose thermolysis? to solve your problem with waste, with plastic waste. Because first of all, we have made a machine that works continuously comparing with the competition that they work in batches. So we don't spend energy for start, stop and clean the machine. Also, when you have a machine that works continuously, you can have a very nice final output. Also, we have made a revolution 
We have made this 150 square meters, comparing with a competition that they have need thousands of square meters for installing one machine. We have made a very nice nine connection of feeds or silos because you have different feeds, feedstock of plastic waste and mixed plastics, and you can make the best recipe to have a really nice final output. And most important is that we create unique insights. We have outputs that are really valuable and zero waste. So you can have fuel that you can use on industry to cover the energy needs in-house. We create gas, which we use also in the machine to make it really efficient. And also the third thing that we produce is carbon black. This is the raw material for every black color that exists and they use in the color industries. So we can sell this. So finally here, a very low investment, low employee needs and low operation cost machine. And except from the small size, we also offer remotely monitor the machine 24 seven from our operation room with our engineers. We don't just sell a machine. We have a control room and we work as a partner. So we support our customers. We have made an attractive energy efficiency ratio machine that gives 78% and we reach the goal. We overcome the goal of the European Union of red two and overcoming red three. Also, you can use a wide range of plastic intake, polyethylene, polypropylene, all the mixed plastic. We have very low emissions and low energy consumption because we reuse the energy in every step of our machine. The plant can be made immediately on a large scale and we support ESG because it will be something really important for the next years. And also the United Nations goals for sustainability, more than 10. Also you understand that you need very light licensing requirements because we're talking about small machine and small investment and especially for countries like Greece, that we have a lot of islands, so a lot of waste everywhere. This is the best solution to eliminate the landfill. So we understand the global market size, it's huge. And the plastic waste market, it will become in 2027, 41 billion. So we're, we're talking about a potential that it is unlimited. So we can make the plan immediately on a large scale. Also, you understand that there's a global, a global need for plastic waste recovery. And with the technology that exists today, this is impossible to achieve. Also, the goals of sustainability and circular economy, it is not possible to make it with the technology of pyrolysis as it exists today. So we give a solution to a major environmental problem. And at the same time, we grow up jobs and economic growth. Interest already has been made from private investors for the machine and funds. But the golden pass will be the prices of the energy of these months that will make our business to grow up. So because we core, the core business is the business to business for us. And we want customers that they collect and produce plastic waste. So it can be recyclers plastic waste companies, governments, local authorities, municipalities, and biofuel consumers. You understand that suppliers, collaborators, and stakeholders could be a lot of people from plastic manufacturers, plastic associations, and sorting companies, and so many. And competitors, we shouldn't call them competitors, but let's say are the companies that I prefer to bury the litter or to use incineration instead. So the next steps for us is first to complete the prototype and today, I'm very happy to share with you that thermolysis is ready and it really works. We are really proud that we made it. And uh, we want just to make thermolysis SA as a company, now to establish the company. And in the future, we want to make some specific partnerships in order to expand in the Western European markets and the US and the, some specific Asia markets. And because we are doing business here, on April 2021, we have made a nice economic analysis by KPMG. The only thing I want to focus here, because we have made a very nice return of investment, less than three years, 
just look at the conservative and optimistic net annual profit. The only thing I would, like, I would like to notice here is that from April 2021 to November 2022, the optimistic is conservative. And I believe that everybody agrees on that. This is our team, we come from different sectors, but we cover each other to make a successful project. And pyrolysis take the plastic waste and create valuable sources because we have a trilogy of success. First, we give a machine with amazing efficiency, 78%. Also, it is a very small investment and small size. And third, we, it is remotely monitored from our control room. So we are together with the customer. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Team Thermolysis. Jerry, you know what you have to do. Let's see, green cards. Okay, we have first question, Mr. Panayotis Karlatos. A very interesting presentation. Uh, really, you present a flexible solution for uh, even uh, small operators or uh, relocated uh, sites. Uh, of course, uh, one of the major targets of the European Union is the structural economy. Uh, with your method, of course, uh, you avoid landfills that is important uh, parameter of pollution, in uh, particular in South Europe. Uh, I, uh, and my, uh, I can see from your presentation that uh, the only material that uh, brings to the circular, goes to the circular economy is the black carbon uh, to the color industry, as far as I understand, it is a small percentage. My question is, uh, is there any possibility now or in the future with your machine uh, by working, for example, one component uh, to be able to take uh, a polymer, the same the monomer of this polymer uh, uh, you, pro uh, you process or a different polymer uh, by doing this job? Yes. Thank you very much for your uh, question. Uh, actually, all the machine that we have made, as you saw in the presentation, it is Lego type. And uh, you can you can take some parts out and you can add also extra parts yes, to the machine. So the, you have them. So we are uh, making a modular build and you can take out one part so you can have just a monomer. We are using distillery here. If you want, you don't use the distillery and you just take the monomers. If you are, for example, based in Germany and you have uh, a company, a chemical company, of course, you can do that. You can create nafra. You can create everything because this is what pyrolysis is doing actually, and we have been one step in front of that. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, team uh, thermolysis. I'm going to ask uh, jury members just to mute yourselves. Uh, everybody except Mr. Panayotis Karlatos, who's asking the question right now because you're interfering with the answers. Uh, team thermolysis, continue, please. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, so I'm yes, I'm we can do it very sure easily. Uh, I've, uh, can you repeat, please? Uh, uh, yes, 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 uh, Mr. Uh, my question, Mr. Is, uh, my yes. question is specific, sorry. My question is specific. Yes. Can, yes. starting from polyethylene, yes, for example, can yes. you produce we can do the monomer ethylene or yes, we can do some it. other polymer useful to be utilized as product, not as fuel? That's my question. Yes, of course, we can do it, and we can do it very easily because we can stop some of the parts that we have on the machine before the distillery and we can produce monomers, we produce NAFA, we produce a lot of uh, different kind of uh, monomers. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it does mean does not uh, under-evaluate your proposal, it's excited, but in my opinion should be a more added value for uh, the chemical industry to have from uh, at the end of this process uh, a raw material that could uh, extract from uh, f f fossil, uh, for, for frozen raw materials. 
maybe it's something that you can uh, depth in uh, we, in the future because raw material uh, chemical that is starving for raw yes. material now particularly with the crisis that, uh, that uh, we face okay when thank we you. offer the machine we offer a lot of different parts that you can add on the machine so you can stop it in the beginning or you can have a totally different uh, monomers or even final fuel to use in-house okay thank you mr scarlatos i think i saw uh, a green cards in jury if, if we can see jury again okay uh, yes mr gunaris i, I have three questions uh, for this interesting presentation which which is the business model you are focusing and and how your uh, your business could expand in the future the first question yes uh, first of all we are focusing on uh, b2b so we want business to business because we are fo focusing on the collectors and the people who create first because we want to create a new route for the plastic waste uh, so we are focusing on industry in the beginning and uh, the model that we have is that we have some uh, already uh, agreements with uh, for the prototype unit and afterwards we have a discussion with the fund for uh, accelerating our business in the future mr gunaris okay thanks the second question is uh, uh, in Greece we have a big problem with uh, the plastic uh, with the plastics on uh, plant protection products can the thermolysis plant uh, handle plastics that have been contaminated with uh, plant protection uh, products and can we have let's say units in uh, agricultural areas in greece uh, recycling uh, for this recycling of uh, 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 plastic uh, for, 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 for plastics yes uh, the answer is yes but the big no. do you hear me yes can you hear me sorry yes 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 of course you just repeat okay. the last sentence please okay uh, yes we can do it but uh, i know especially for greece that they now try to make a special organization for the collect of this uh, packaging to be sure that it will be clean with co from the contaminations so if we are cooperate with this organization and we take the collection of the packages and they are clean of course we can do it and we have thought with our uh, team the r d team we are one step in front because we have add inside emissions controller that gives us the data real time and in case that we see something that is out of the limit we can check back immediately and uh, change the recipe of the final product so we don't have any emissions that are not approved from the Minister of Energy. Time market. And the third question is... Yes? Yes, yes, yes. Go and on. the third question is uh, related uh, with uh, the marine environment. Can thermolysis uh, handle plastics that have been extracted from the marine environment? We have a big problem also there because of the uh, uh, 6,000 costs because of uh, uh, let's say of the seas that are polluted with let's say with uh, plastics yes the answer is that uh, this is something that we do every day in thermolysis uh, we try to that was the beginning what we tried to do to do uh, to try to work with the high contamination plastics this will only increase the final product the carbon black and uh, even if it is with salt so let's say that you have more of uh, uh, inorganic materials you have to check also the emissions and that's why we have the nine different silos because when you have a lot of silos you can always check and make uh, solve any problem in your uh, recipe in time and the plastic from the marine you all know that it is high quality plastic so probably also the final output is really good and we can use it in the machine very easily Thank you very much. I think we had, yes, 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 yes. Uh, let's go with uh, uh, Miss Effie uh, Lazaridou with the question. Yes, thank you for the presentation. So I was wondering, what is the, 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 uh, the capex for one, let's say, medium size um, um, operating facility? Yes, it's approximately three and a half million. 
and uh, we also include a, a small amount for the um, support that we are having with our engineers 24-7 uh, to work together, let's say, because we have to monitor the machine. And the machine also, with the emissions monitor, it is connected with the Minister of Energy. So we don't leave anything uh, in the lack. <laughs> we control and, and all you... the machine. Okay, and annual operating expenses, I mean, does this involve, um, um, you know, someone, a plant manager that is, should be there 24-7, or how, how is this operating? And what the are the, the expenses different. annually? Yes, I will tell you. The operation is a little bit different. This is the price of the machine, but uh, the, afterwards, all the other capital is really, really small. And uh, depending from the customer, because, for example, we have some uh, valuable customers here that we are in cooperation, and for example they have their own fields and they have their own engineers so you just need a small uh, place to put the machine inside to install the machine so for every customer it is different it is uh, but uh, let's say that the average cost is extra 300,000 just for the installation to a new plant new engineers even the secretaries we have involved inside the project uh, the business plan that we have done with KPMG okay thank you welcome Mr. Nunesis, you had a question, I think, yes. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you for the, for the a wonderful presentation. Um, my question is, you are visiting, a, a, as you said, it very nicely, a well-proven procedure, pyrolysis, and, and you are uh, brave and, and um, visionary to, to, to hope for, a, for a, an innovative, as you said, it revolution in, in, with a well-proven uh, tool. Uh, so what I'm saying is, what makes your company unique? I, I see you submitted eight uh, applications uh, for patents. Uh, what are these patents concerning and when you expect them to be granted? Yes, I will give you some information because we have a non-disclosure agreement because this is yes, the Yes, I mean, very, very, very general yes. description, yes, yes. Deal, general. Yeah. We, have, we have patents uh, in the process and also in the machinery different ones that's why we have 100 claims it is a lot uh, so let's say even from the silos that you can have different feedstocks and you continue to change the recipe and with this you can solve problems of the final product also we have continuously most of the machines that exist in the world they are not continuously they are in batches they start they stop they clean the machine and then they start again also we have um, the reactor this is the most important the reactor itself is uh, one patent because we take so much energy energy from that and that's why we have high efficiency of 78 percent most of the pyrolysis if you if you if you look in the google all over the world they can achieve something like 30 percent and only a few of them for example that they invest huge amounts they can arrive to uh, the red two and red three okay that's but one that's about... that's one minute that's one minute for for the Thank answer you. yeah one, once you settle your your IP, do you are you are you having plans for raising capital and for yes. in which direction? Yes. Uh, first, we have the, to install uh, we'll install the prototype. We have a customer for that, and we also try to have some customers immediately in Greece, uh, specific customers, MVPs actually. Uh, also, we have non-disclosure agreement with them, so I cannot say name. But uh, we are planning to do that, and we also uh, we are six months uh, now with uh, some funds that they want uh, to take, uh, let's say, to, to, to take part in pyrolysis, and uh, we take some uh, large funding for that for growing up. And, and final question: Do you anticipate regulatory issues from for the opera from the operation of your plant? Uh, we are now on experimental certification, so. Uh, we had issues actually because this is an R&D of eight years. We didn't start yesterday. Now we just finished the machine. And I can assure you that from the day that we designed the machine until today, it is a totally different machine. Because for example, uh, we have mixed plastics. When you have mixed plastics, you have to change, uh, let's say the, the motors and uh, the way that we dry, for example, the feedstock. So, Yes, we have problems during all this design, and we always change. And this is just a prototype. We believe that we are going to, to, to revision that, and we're going to have the version two of the machine, version three, and depending from what the customer needs. 
Mr. Unesis. Okay. I am done. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Mr. Guinaris, I'm going to ask you to, to wait since uh, Mr. Panayotis Karlatos uh, has a question and uh, haven't asked any questions uh, for this uh, team. Uh, Mr. Skarlatos, let's hear your question. Thank you. This is the second question. Uh, I repeat the question of Mr. Nunes about the regulatory of the product that you produce. You start from the waste, uh, according to the EU definition is waste and you take a fuel that is a product. Uh, that is web is uh, varies the composition. Uh, have you submitted or you have uh, done the work of uh, decharacterization that means to uh, from to have the approval of the Ministry of the Environment this product to be characterized as material and uh, or byproduct, whatever, been uh, not a waste. Uh, do you think, if you don't that, do you think that uh, will surpass uh, all the bureaucracy? I don't know what is in other uh, countries, but in Greece there is a, a, a very heavy bureaucracy. Uh, what is your thought on that? Yes. First of all, we are in the certification now, so we send the. Uh, we're not going to send the samples uh, abroad because we don't have. Uh, uh, we cannot make this. Uh, we cannot make. We don't have any. Let's say uh, um, people here that they can find out what is the final product that we produce. But uh, I can assure you that because we have the distillery, we take the medium, the high, and the low uh, oils. So we can have separate oils, and we can send all the samples to certificate. And uh, when you use in-house, it is totally different from if you want to sell the, the product, the final product. So what you say, the legislation is for selling the product. It is different if you want to use in-house with your own generator. And uh, of course, we have tested the products uh, in-house. And we know that it's something uh, very similar to uh, biodiesel. Okay, I think you are right for this, uh, because if you are trying to sell outside, there are many obstacles from the, from the government. And uh, my second qu uh, question is, uh, if, we, if you take material uh, from the uh, public uh, central collection system, what we call CVI, we know that the quality is uh, sometimes so-so. Uh, can your machine process uh, material that is not proper for the mechanical recycling. We know that from CDI, uh, some streams are dirty or uh, less dirty and we can be uh, mechanically recycled. What is your thought on that? Yes. Uh, actually, this is what we focus on because this is the unlimited feedstock that you can find. And uh, the only thing that we have to do before is to make it flakes, so you, we just need a shredder before, nothing else. Even if it is wet, inside we are using a circular uh, energy uh, system that we use the energy of the machine, of the output, to make it dry, the feedstock. So we just need to be flakes or pellets or something like that. We don't have any other problem. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gunaris, your turn. Yes. Last, last question in the last moment. Uh, which are the machines emissions and which are the side products of the process and how you are going to utilize, utilize those products? Yes. Uh, as I told before, the emissions that we have, um, actually the emissions that we have are very similar to a house burner of natural gas. And uh, I can assure you that it is also better because in our system, we don't just use a burner of a house and you just take the emissions out and you make a service once per year. We are doing continuously closed loop burning tuning. So we have the best output and we have the emission controller. So we check all the output uh, real time. And the final outputs that we have, we have zero waste. We only produce uh, the fuels, the carbon, the recycled carbon fuels, this is how they name it in the red tree. Uh, Syn gas, which is the gas that you can burn and we use it inside the machine for achieving so much efficiency, 
and the carbon black that you can sell on the market very easily. The, the raw material for creating any black color. Mr. Gunaris. Thank you very much. Okay, Jerry, you any more questions? Thank you. No, no more questions. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thermolysis team. I think it's an interesting idea considering that you not only had questions, you also had an advice from our jury. And uh, now we go to the uh, choosing the peach uh, part of this event. We have Solmeyea, hybrid agro agri-biotech adventure that is transforming inorganic CO2 into high-valuable biomolecules such as proteins and vitamins. They claim that the secret lies in photosynthesis, but we will now see where is the catch. Solomea, okay, you, have, you, ha you are ready with the presentation. Your 10 minutes starts now. Uh, you have to unmute yourself, team Solmia. Yeah, just unmute yourself. Hello, hey, it's okay. It's uh, okay. Continue. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for the opportunity as well on our end. Uh, congratulations to all the four previously presented ventures. Those are quite exciting and inspiring concepts, also for us. Indeed, uh, we're a biotech venture dealing with vertical microalgae farming with simultaneous CO2 utilization assimilation. So we inspire CO2 circularity. Um, how we do it and well, why we do it? Because we need to, let's say, contribute and not solve uh, three core issues that humanity is currently facing. One is the need uh, for better, healthier, more transparent food. The second is, let's say, the climate crisis because of the CO2 emissions in the atmosphere, thanks to the heavy industry. And the last one is, of course, the necessity of also clean, sustainable energy. Moreover, due to the current geopolitical conditions we all are facing. Our proposed solution and what we're already working on is our vertical microalgae farming based on our patent through CO2 utilization. This ends up into 100% biomass, biomass valorization according to the EU directive. So we take the maximum of what we can coming from the nature and we optimally utilize all our uh, natural resources for this reason. A second patent, a second concept deals with the biofuels. So the same concept more or less, the CO2 conversion into volatile fatty acids. You use this as a glucose substitute to use it as a carbon substrate for your fermentation process that, incentive, that can uh, very let's say, efficiently produce um, high content of lipids that can be transcertified certified into third generation of biofuels. Um, why microalgae? Because it has the highest protein content on earth it has a full amino acid profile. It provokes uh, the least possible allergenicity effects compared to any other plant-based source of protein. And of course, it has uh, the lowest ever environmental impact the way it's being produced. Plus, it enables us, as uh, let's say growers, to fully optimize, as I said before, the, and valorize the whole biomass of what the nature is offering us. Um, the plant-based food application that we're currently working on is uh, for meat, fish, eggs, snacks, pasta, smoothies, all the way to dairy substitutes uh, coming from green biomass, the white biomass, the yellow biomass, and of course the fractions, the protein isolates, the lipids, and the colorants slash pigments. Um, the next scenario that we're working on is, as I said, the biofuels. So with intensified CO2 blocking or CO2 conversion into VFAs, you end up intensifiedly fermenting microalgae, and that's how rich lipids you get these for the biofuels. Um, the markets are quite big. I know they don't analyze with all due respect, unless there's a question about this one. Of course, we focus on the left part, which deals with the actual sales of the proteins and the biomass. But on the right hand, we also have the carbon offsets. This is a great incentive for us to grow as a company because there are also the offset markets. That's also good for us. And on the left part of this slide, you also care about the biofuels to see how big this market can also be. Um, so far, we have contracted customers thanks to the EIT, European Institute of Innovation and Technology, big project that we have uh, been awarded. So we have companies from Spain, Sweden, France, Greece that are willing to get our raw materials for plant-based burgers, fish, eggs, and snacks. And we have also an NDA with Danone that we just signed because of this project. Uh, so that we can develop together innovative product, program, product, products coming through microalgae. Um, of course, we have also um, vested interest from the maritime industry 
for biofuels. This is the most cyclical or circular, let's say, concept that so far we're working on. CO2 from the vessel gets converted into VFA, and then this VFA into, um, pretty much accelerates further and boosts the microalgae growing process to fermentation for third generation biofuels for the same vessels. Um, so far, we have our pilot and our demo scale facility um, based in Democritus Research Center. And uh, we are also working on the phase two, which should be our scale up scenario of an industrial facility close by Ptolemaida, most probably, because of the delignitization era and the just transition fund as an extra incentive. We are raising up to 2 million that will help us further grow faster our process uh, because I want you to remember us as a microalgae platform company that grows microalgae in any possible way, vertically always. So we can do it autotrophically, heterotrophically for fermentation, as well as mixotropically, the combo of those two. Um, the unit economics, uh, I'm not going to analyze in just 10 minutes. On the right part of the screen where my cursor is, hopefully you can see, I need to explain to you the levelized cost of CO2 and how this can go down given that the current uh, CO2, let's say, penalties are up to 85 euros and the, uh, dollars per ton, and they can go up to 120 or 150. In our case, in our scale-up scenario, by 2026, the levelized cost of CO2 can go below to uh, 63 euros, more or less. And the biomass production can also go down. Uh, ESGs and SDGs related, this is, let's say, part of the DNA of Solmeja as a company. Uh, I'm an environmental engineer. I worked only about uh, with uh, the CO2 as a pillar concept of our process, and we tend to meet seven of those SDGs. We also have a committed relationship with DEI, so we can develop together in Ptolemaida this uh, scale-up scenario. Uh, a bunch of awards, with all due respect, that I don't want to overanalyze since the time. That's my background. I'm the environmental engineer, and so make us pretty much the pivoted version of my graduate thesis at Columbia. This is part of our team, and this is my, our pride. They are all biotech and uh, business people and engineers coming from the Netherlands, France, uh, China, India, America, and soon one lady also from Brazil. And this is our corporate advisory board. And this is our scientific advisory board. Um, it's an substantiating investment opportunity. I need to show on this slide on the upper part, companies working with CO2 and how acknowledged they are. And on the bottom part, companies working with microalgae and how interested they're also in. We're in the verge of those two. Uh, and this is, let's say, the big picture of where we're going. From the left, number two, one, three, four, five, six, you collaborate with a CO2 emitter, you take the CO2, you convert with number three into the VFAs, you use those VFAs as a glucose substitute to incentivize your microalgae process, and then you produce raw materials for FMCG manufacturers, such as BESP, and then you can also have those allowances that you're getting from EU ETS, European Tariff System, that you can sell to airline companies that cannot do much against their CO2 emissions that reasonably they also have. So revenue streams to the left, to the right part, as of now, food, feed, and biofuels, raw materials. And in the near future, on the left part of the screen, CO2 credits and CO2 allowances. Um, our scale-up plan from the left to the right, so, so far we're a team of 10 people with our pre-industrial scale facility. It's almost 1.5 up to 2 million projects that we're finishing in Democritus. And the plan is by 1026 to have already transitioned to Ptolemaida and then do the joint venture with different entities from CO2 emitters all the way to um, biofuels, uh, biodegradable bioplastic packaging solutions, as well as um, painting and, of course, food, fit pharma, cosmetics. So thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you, Thim Salmiya. I'll, I'll say this was a fast but just as good presentation. Now let's get to the jury. Questions? Do we have any questions? No questions? Okay. Ms. Effie Lazaridis has a question. So thank you for the presentation, very interesting. Um, I was wondering, the project that you're working on with, through the EIT, um, can, you, can you tell us a bit yes. more? Are there, these are, have, have those involved? Have you uh, produced some kind of tangible results already? Yes. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Before you start, before you start sorry, Team uh, so, Salmiya, can you turn off the uh, presentation? And I'm going to remind you, while you do that, I'm going to remind you that you have one minute to answer the question. Thank so, you. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity as a question. Uh, um, this project is almost a 2.1 million euros. Uh, so make as the coordinator. We have collaboration with four exploitation partners doing plant-based fish, meat, eggs, and snacks. So those companies, they have already tried our samples 
and they know and they're convinced that our microalgae proteins and their microalgae extracts can be very useful for their end applications because they, at the end they want to say that they are sustainably produced with CO2 absorbed and they also want to say that they are palm oil free end products because the lipids of the microalgae functions way better than palm oil or even olive oil based on uh, let's say publications from the academia and the industry. Um, so this project has started. We have our pile production line already established uh, and it's working. And that's how the examples have come out. And now we're finishing our pre-industrial facility in 1,100 square meters greenhouse, through which we're supposed to produce five tons of biomass for those end users, as well as Danone, and uh, also fixate more than 10 tons of CO2 annually. Okay, that's one, one minute mark. Ms. Uh, just, just a follow-on question to yes. clarify, if I may. Yes, yes, yes uh, of course. So this new facility is it? Uh, it so the, this new facility needs this um, two million plus that you are raising to be completed. Lovely question. No, this facility is going to be mainly. It will cost us almost 1.5 m. Part of which is the EIT food grant, almost 60 percent. The remaining needs to get covered or on our expenses or our own, let's say, funds. And the rest of the funds that we're, let's say, raising us are also for this biofuels project about uh, developing extra fermentation processes and about also nurturing, if I may use this word, furthermore or growing also our patent with DTU, Denmark Technical University, for the CO2 conversion into BFAs. This is a patent following up on previous questions with all due respect to the juries, uh, for which Solmeja has bought out 100% of the commercialization rights from Denmark Technical University. So we collaborated on the invention technically, but the collaboration rights, thank God, we have managed to buy them out. Thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Okay, we have a question from Mr. Panayotis uh, uh, Skalatos. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was uh, very interesting, interesting uh, and uh, really a response to the problems of the society, I would say, of, of our uh, entire community as well as uh, industry. Uh, you mentioned that you capture the CO2 from the atmosphere or directly from the emitters. Uh, if I understand well, uh, you described uh, as a part of your process uh, a process of conditioning of CO2 or uh, cleaning or uh, whatever uh, is that. Uh, this uh, machine, uh, this machine of cleaning CO2 is a part of your technology, a part of your investment and cost, or is it something that is uh, you use the and the technology of the existing technologies and uh, that uh, and how uh, what is the influence on the cost of your project for an inv for an investor that's my question honestly it's a very spot on and lovely question because it gives me the opportunity to also explain better the concept so no we do not deal with direct air capture this has an unbearable cost almost 1000 euros per ton as of today uh, Climeworks is the company from Eteha that does that. So instead, we tend to collaborate with heavy particular CO2 emitters and we collect the CO2 right before it gets emitted. So in theory, you can pipe the CO2 before from the smokestack and you take it, you filter it if needed, unless it comes from natural gas, and you directly use it for your algae or you convert this into the volatile fatty acids, the VFAs. And that's how you develop the carbon substrate that we use as a catalyst for our microalgae growing process. I suppose for the food uh, product, uh, I suppose that you use clean uh, CO2 or without heavy metals or what others uh, is... Undoubtedly, uh, yes. Uh, ...the emitters. Uh, you, don't, you, you don't have a problem with this, uh, the quality of CO2 that uh, you collect now uh, in your program. Excuse my enthusiasm okay. for stepping in while you were talking. So yes, indeed, uh, we do bother too much about heavy metals and the CO2. That's why we are all unfortunate of having ample of CO2. So we tend to select clean CO2 coming technically from natural gas. We're not already there as of already having the capacity of filtering 
uh, cement industry CO2, let's, let's say. However, CO2 coming again from uh, certain specific CO2 emitters can be relieved of heavy metals, or we can all decide that we can afford to have the extra cost of filtering the heavy metals and keep, let's say, the clean CO2. But this is just for the food, pharma, and cosmetics, whereas if we're going for the biofuels of the maritime industry, this can also include the heavy metals and keep on growing, let's say, intensively. And the uh, second question is uh, about the biofuel. It's an interesting uh, uh, project, and uh, the, I know for a couple of years there are existing some uh, similar initiatives to produce uh, uh, CO2 for uh, microalgae. Uh, what is your, the advantage of your technology compared to the other uh, methods that uh, have been developed by university or? Uh, other uh, competitors. What is your basic advantage? Also, my honor to answer this question. Thank you very much for this opportunity. The core company that was working on CO2 into biofuels in the past was called Solazine. This was in the States. This was, let's say, if you see Solmeja, Solazine, there is a correlation in there. It was, let's say, my main inspiration. My advising professor, uh, whose name is Klaus Lackner, and he's German. Uh, he was the one who was mentoring that company, and those guys were working on second generation of biofuels. So those guys they were doing directly CO2, algae in ponds, not intensified, no vertical, no glass tubular systems, moreover, not much of fermentation. So we are working on third generation of biofuels, no using GM, even though we are allowed. And because of the patent of CO2 conversion to VFAs, this gives nine times faster or more efficient way of biomass as well as lipid production that's why it is a more promising concept so the third generation of biofuels given the current geopolitical conditions as well makes it a necessity to also explore this opportunity and so far we are kind of blessed if not lucky to have a very big listed maritime company who found us right after our world economic thank forum you. in davos presence. thank you thank you. I, I have to, i have to stop you it's, it's a one minute it's a one minute answer but i think that that's a good answer uh, Mr. Scarlatos, are you are you Thank satisfied? You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gunaris, I, I think I saw a green card. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Mr. Nunesis, I saw a green card from you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, from food to biofuels to CO2 capture, it is disruptive your approach. But for your technology, I mean, there are uh, different and huge worlds of regulation in these three basic, uh, you know, grand sectors. Uh, what do you think about possible burdens and costs of the technology because of that? And, 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 uh, and how far can things go to have a really innovative solution in the market? Thank you very much for this question. I need to be fast. Um, so. We, do, we call it Inspire CO2 Circularity. We have in our corporate advisory board, that I, could, I, go, I went a bit fast, uh, people coming from Nova Institute focusing only on policy making about the CO2. That's about the CO2 as a regulation concept. In reference to the food and to the biofuels, we're collaborating with the EIT food per se, and they show their trust on our potential because there are no limitations, no problems, no risk in reference to food assimilation or to food and products. Uh, companies like Danone and all the other ones who are working with us, they know that the microalgae, the way we're growing it in closed control, uh, fully safe, transparent systems, as they call it, they are quite solidified. The result can be safe for human and animals consumption. In reference to the biofuels, this is too early to say, to be honest, but this is also something that our corporate advisors can help us further working on the policies. For now, there is a huge interest based on the IPCC report for the maritime and the airline companies to lower their emissions or to how, let's say, the biofuels. And that's how this incentive came up. So okay, regulations that, wise. That's, 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 that's one minute. That's one. When you, hear, when you hear a sound, I'll give you time to finish the sentence, but I cannot allow you to, to, to take <laughs> you too long to answer. Uh, Okay, Mr. Nunesis. Thank you. Thank you. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Gunaris, I'm sorry. Did you have a question? Concerning the public, uh, the cooperation with public electricity company, uh, you, you, tell, you, you tell us that, that there are annual returns higher than 200 million. Can you explain us yes. about, uh, let's say, this uh, great, let's say, uh, return? 
Okay, excuse me if I exaggerate, but I'm quite honored that you also went through our appendices and I'm very happy that you went through this slide. So yes, last summer we had um, a request from the E to have this uh, paid uh, technoeconomic analysis on their end and we did that. So we analyzed the tangible and intangible elements that they're making from. So those points one, two, three, four, five, it says that they make money from lesser emissions that we can end up uh, fixating on their behalf. The second, so the, from the penalties, second comes from the ESGs. So they are healthily loaned of more than half a billion. So any corporation like the E or LP who have already um, that big of a loan, they can lower their interest rates based on ESG incentives that they have. Same way BASF. So by lowering their interest rate from 5.75% to let's say 4 or 3.75%, which is the nominal basis points, they can also lower on an annual basis by almost 60 million their uh, returns that they have to give to the banks. On top of that, they have the local GDP that cannot be monetized, but the most important, in my humble opinion, is the actual uh, extra added value that their underutilized, non-fertile, non-arable pieces of land up in there can be, can have, that they can also further collateralize, if I use this word, for their own further valuations or for their own extra debt mm -hmm. to raise. Okay, thank you. What is the reaction, last question, from the, from, uh, what, what is the reaction, what is, is the status right now? Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to answer this question. Thank you. Yes, we're in discussions with them. We're offering a very tremendous opportunity in the Western Macedon Macedonia to develop a, a CO2 hub on their behalf. So that's why our pre industrial facility, as of now, makes a huge interest and can also tangibly show the impact that, and the potential they can have. So we presented them six different phases as of how we can scale this scenario up together with, let's say, PPC. And they told us, I don't like the one, I like the eighth scenario that it wasn't there. And I said, okay, let's start with one, let's go to four and then scale up right to the eighth scenario. But they're interested to work together and there are specific financial mechanisms, just transition fund, innovation fund from the EU, and of course, the Anaptixiakos Nomos, those are just three of the scenario that they can work on to get 75% um, subsidies as of how we will build this up together and we're not asking for any capex on their behalf we can finish it our own selves hopefully with our investors and the banks that are willing to work together if we can bring 75 percent grants for this big project mr gunaris any more questions Thank you very much. no not from my side no Thank more you. questions no more questions. Thank you, Tim Solmeyea. It, uh, it was a good session answering the questions and the questions itself. Uh, as I will say, our jury is objective and transparent. And as you can see, they check the portfolio of all the teams they are uh, uh, judging today. Uh, uh, wow. We're, we're now having five amazing ideas. I think, in, I, think I, speak, I, I think I speak in the name of all of us when I say it's now it's not now it's even more exciting than it was at the beginning but also i believe that the jury as much as they enjoy themselves uh, asking uh, hard questions now face a difficult task a jury members good luck uh, making a decision who wins uh, <clears throat> we are entering right now the second half of this uh, stunning event with the 10 minutes commercial break video during which the jury will have time to summarize uh, their impressions and cast their votes. Uh, let me tell you uh, right now what will you be watching. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in our video, you'll dive into BASF as a company, BASF's flagship solution and their work focusing on sustainability. Enjoy. Welcome to BASF in Ludwigshafen, Germany. Situated on the Rhine River, it is home to the world's largest integrated chemical complex. Founded in 1865 as a synthetic dyes factory, BASF has developed into one of the world's leading chemical companies. Countless discoveries that have changed the world and shaped our daily lives have their roots in Ludwigshafen. Around 39,000 employees one-third of BASF's employees around the world work at the site. Thousands of products for customers from almost all industries are manufactured in 200 production plants. 
Nearly 3,000 kilometers of pipelines, 106 kilometers of roads, and 230 kilometers of rails connect these plants and some 2,000 buildings on an area measuring 10 square kilometers. 1,900 trucks, 400 rail cars, and 15 barges enter and leave the site every day. The Ludwigshafen site is the cradle of BASF's Verbund system of efficient value chains. In this system, chemical processes make use of energy more efficiently, achieve higher product yields, and conserve resources. Byproducts of one process are used as starting materials for another process. This is how we save raw materials and energy, minimize emissions, cut logistics costs, and realize synergies. The two steam crackers are among the largest production plants in Ludwigshafen and form the heart of the site. These plants use steam to turn naphtha into smaller molecules that are the building blocks for many of our products. Through our products and innovations, we help our customers reduce their carbon footprints and deliver solutions that are essential for climate protection. From insulation materials for energy efficient housing to battery materials for electromobility. We've also set ambitious climate protection targets for our own production, recognizing that our industry is energy and carbon intensive. By 2030, we want to reduce our absolute CO2 emissions by 25% compared with 2018. Compared with 1990, this corresponds to a reduction of 60% which even exceeds the European Union's target. We are committed to making BASF net carbon neutral by 2050. This will require completely new technologies. The first test and pilot plants are already in operation. But we will also need large amounts of renewable energy and an enabling political framework. And above all, we need bold ideas, courage, and entrepreneurship. Since its foundation more than 150 years ago, BASF has faced numerous challenges and has adapted continuously. If politics, industry, and society work together, we are convinced that we can successfully master the energy transformation and ensure that our Ludwigshafen site continues to offer sustainable solutions for the generations to come. BASF. We create chemistry. A city. Millions of hearts beating in time. Millions of minds imagining schemes and dreams. Or just wondering what the day will bring. Cities are like huge laboratories bursting with ideas source of energy for artists and thinkers of all kinds, for doers, for creators, for all of us. Oh, and let's not forget the coffee makers. So let's take inspiration from cities. Let's revel in their ability to lift our spirits, to show us that life is rich with possibilities, and that cities are where life can be lived to the full. From streets that drain rainwater to battery materials for electric cars which help reduce emissions. From solutions for construction to take highways underground to biologically degradable plastic. From coastal barriers that protect homes to noise reduction technology. We help create reasons to be optimistic about the future of our cities. BASF, we create chemistry. Cars are no longer just a way to get from point A to point B. They are where we work, where we share experiences, 
Network. And where we live some of the best moments of our lives with the ones we love. This is what the automotive future looks like. Sustainable, connected, and autonomous. This is where you need a strong and innovative partner like BASF Automotive Solutions. Let's ask what drives us forward together. The biggest question is, does nature have to end where the road starts? Of course not. We are strongly committed to sustainability across the entire value chain. There are ambitious sustainability challenges ahead. Circular economy, CO2 reduction, and cleaner air. We're tackling all of that with innovative solutions such as high-performance battery materials, sustainable fuel additives, lubricants, catalysts, surface treatments, and plastics. Sounds good? Sure. How can lightweighting help future mobility take off? Lightweight construction with plastics helps build low emission and resource saving vehicles. We develop light materials for heavy tasks, meeting the needs of the industry. And what about the combination of dynamics, safety and comfort? With us, it is reality. We improve the driving experience and comfort level with solutions to reduce noise, vibration and harshness while maintaining a comfortable cabin. We protect your engine's vital parts with the right coolant. And is it just the materials that make the difference? To move ahead, you need a trusted partner like us who can optimize processes and offer expertise. Our first-rate service and collaboration help your business use our products the best way possible. We are also asking the question of whether design can be truly moving. Our experts create materials that give you the freedom to create individual designs that in some cases use trendy colors. High-tech materials create a modern and welcoming automotive design. And finally, is home where the road leads us? Yes, with BASF Automotive Solutions. Thanks to high-tech materials, a modern and welcoming automotive interior design can be achieved. We've asked a lot of questions, and together, we'll find answers. Whether your journey involves e-mobility solutions, improving powertrains, lightweight construction, design, automated driving, or ensuring a smooth ride, BASF offers solutions. Let's shape mobility to be more sustainable, more comfortable, and safer, together. BASF, automotive solutions. BASF, we create chemistry. We want to contribute to a world that offers a viable future with enhanced quality of life for everyone. To this end, we want to balance the areas of economy, environment, and society. But how do we know if we are working on the right issues? This is where the value to society approach, which we developed together with external experts in 2013, helps us. It can be used to make the value we as a company provide to society measurable in monetary terms. And this is how it works. We use comprehensive data to calculate the impact of our suppliers, of our own production, and of our customers' production on economic, environmental, and social aspects. We have been publishing these calculations on the contribution of our business activity to the three dimensions since 2013. They show that despite some changes over time, the overall result of our value added to society was consistently positive. The advantage of the value to society approach is that we can present the results in monetary terms, which are comprehensible in the outside world, for example, in the financial sector and in society. Moreover, these values can enable a comparison between companies worldwide. The method also facilitates the dialogue with our stakeholders, including business partners and shareholders, as well as representatives from politics and society. The results help us to understand our own sustainability contribution, to set priorities, and to steer our business in the long term. 
We are not alone in this approach, but there are no global, common standards to measure the overall impact of companies. That's why we have partnered with the Value Balancing Alliance to create a cross-industry standard. This would be a first step towards more transparency and further progress on our path to a sustainable, viable future. BASF. We create chemistry. To protect the climate, we're changing in ways that might surprise you. We've turned to the most experienced fluid dynamics experts in the world to make airplanes more efficient. We're planning a heat pump the size of a soccer field to reduce our own emissions. Blazing a trail with recycling technology to breathe new life into old electric vehicle batteries. And to power our own factories. We're building an offshore wind farm, the biggest in the world. To protect the climate, we're changing, getting inspiration from all kinds of places and all kinds of people. Welcome to BASF in Ludwigshafen, Germany. Situated on the Rhine River, it is home to the world's largest integrated chemical complex. Founded in 1865 as a synthetic dyes factory, BASF has developed into one of the world's leading chemical companies. Countless discoveries that have changed the world and shaped our daily lives have their roots in Ludwigshafen. Around 39,000 employees one-third of BASF's employees around the world work at the site. Thousands of products for customers from almost all industries are manufactured in 200 production plants. Nearly 3,000 kilometers of pipelines, 106 kilometers of roads, and 230 kilometers of rails connect these plants and some 2,000 buildings on an area measuring 10 square kilometers. 1,900 trucks, 400 rail cars and 15 barges enter and leave the site every day. The Ludwigshafen site is the cradle of BASF's Verbund system of efficient value chains. In this system, chemical processes make use of energy more efficiently, achieve higher product yields and conserve resources. Byproducts of one process are used as starting materials for another process. This is how we save raw materials and energy, minimize emissions, cut logistics costs, and realize synergies. The two steam crackers are among the largest production plants in Ludwigshafen and form the heart of the site. These plants use steam to turn naphtha into smaller molecules that are the building blocks for many of our products. Through our products and innovations, we help our customers reduce their carbon footprints and deliver solutions that are essential for climate protection. From insulation materials for energy efficient housing to battery materials for electromobility. We've also set ambitious climate protection targets for our own production, recognizing that our industry is energy and carbon intensive. By 2030, we want to reduce our absolute CO2 emissions by 25% compared with 2018. Compared with 1990, this corresponds to a reduction of 60%, which even exceeds the European Union's target. We are committed to making BASF net carbon neutral by 2050. This will require completely new technologies. The first test and pilot plants are already in operation. But we will also need large amounts of renewable energy and an enabling political framework. And above all, we need bold ideas, courage, and entrepreneurship. Since its foundation more than 150 years ago, BASF has faced numerous challenges and has adapted continuously. If politics, industry, and society work together, we are convinced that we can successfully master the energy transformation and ensure that our Ludwigshafen site 
continues to offer sustainable solutions for the generations to come. BASF. We create chemistry. A city. Millions of hearts beating in time. Millions of minds imagining schemes and dreams. Or just wondering what the day will bring. Cities are like huge laboratories bursting with ideas. A source of energy for artists and thinkers of all kinds. For doers, for creators, for all of us. Oh, and let's not forget the coffee makers. So, let's take inspiration from cities. Let's revel in their ability to lift our spirits, to show us that life is rich with possibilities, and that cities are where life can be lived to the full. From streets that drain rainwater, to battery materials for electric cars which help reduce emissions. From solutions for construction to take highways underground to biologically degradable plastic. From coastal barriers that protect homes to noise reduction technology. We help create reasons to be optimistic about the future of our cities. We create. <laughs> this was intense. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. I'm so sorry you couldn't just take a peek in a jury's room. And it's time to, to summon our jury again. Uh, good morning to you. For the second time, it was. Uh, I, I would say it, it was hard decision, Mr. Gunaris. Can you can you share with us? Very, very hard decision. Very hard decision. Thanks to all the finalists. Uh, all innovations are of great interest. Uh, difficult uh, to find, uh, let's say, the winner because we have five winners. Five winners. Yes, but without be, be, without because, without uh, revealing the winner, leave it to me, please. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, very to, difficult to yes. decide on the best candidate. Uh, after a fruitful discussions, we came up uh, with a winner. And the winner is no 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 I'm 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 it's my job I'm here to say who's the okay, winner okay, just okay, tell me how okay. did <laughs> the winner is and you're going to announce yes going so I'm announce. going to announce don't take it away from me please I was waiting okay, for okay. you to, to to consolidate uh, Mr. Scarlatos uh, what, what what's the conclusion uh, really it was uh, difficult to distinguish from uh, five excellent uh, proposals. Uh, the best one. I, uh, since it's the second uh, continuous time that I am in the jury, I would say that uh, we have a, a higher level compared to the previous year. And I'm very happy to be member of this uh, of this committee. Uh, would you like to announce the? <laughs> the <laughs> <win>? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I'm going to do. But I, first, I have to <laughs> to hear from Mr. Nunesis. Uh, 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 a lot of questions, a lot of advice is given here today. Yeah, I, I, as I said before, I'm truly honored and now I'm very happy that I have participated in this event. Congratulations to all of you guys. I believe uh, very much in, in startups. You, you are producing uh, science, you are producing technology uh, these days, which can be even more competitive than what's produced in universities. A more competitive than one is produced in research centers. Keep up this work because you will have a real impact in the economy as well. Congratulations. Miss Lazaridou, phenomenal, five phenomenal ideas. How did you choose? Yes, five, five phenomenal ideas and five phenomenal startups. Uh, we, personally, I was uh, extremely uh, impressed by the techpreneurs that participated in this final round. Um, I wish you all the best for the future and I'm certain that we will hear from each one of you um, in, in the next few years with uh, great evolution and great uh, prospects in front of you. So I, I do believe that uh, you're all in the right direction. We need more um, solutions, tech solutions uh, towards circularity and sustainability and you're, you're assisting in that direction. So congratulations. 
Thank you, thank you, Jerry. And time has come, uh, but uh, who is the winner of the Greece BASF Innovation Hub 2022? No, I have to tell you something. It's five phenomenal ideas. You have heard. Uh, let me remind you what they, they were. Farm Air specializing in crop protection. They offered solution for accurate detection of biotic and abiotic plant stress. Intellig is developing a software as a service solution for energy savings and buildings. Optimum Smart Energy Solution is decarbonizing the electrical grid by transforming it into this decentralized, self-sustainable, renewable-based entity within a Smart Grid 2.0 environment. Then we met Thermolysis, an innovative waste plastic to fuel technology that aims to contribute to the circular economy by upcycling plastic waste and reshaping the energy sector. And then last but not least, Solmeyer, a team producing functional proteins and high value bio-based products for food, feed and pharma applications through hybrid, hybrid vertical microalgae farming. I'm, I'm saying it again. This was this was really intense, <clears throat> and it led all to. Uh, so we're going to find out now uh, of five teams who goes to the grand finals. The card with the name of the winning team is here with me, but the jury made the last sentence, and the winner of BASF Innovation Hub. 2022 is Can you can you feel the tension? Solmeya Let's hear from you. I can see that you are excited, excited you, uh, almost no words, but let's hear from you. People that know me, first of all, obviously, thank you from the top of my heart. Thank you on behalf of all our team members. Um, this was a very stressful process because all the companies, all the people I met virtually this time are brilliant. And everyone used those words like honored and grateful. So I have to find new words. It's almost difficult because I'm Greek. I'm still, um, it is a blessing to be part of this, let's say, selective group. I'm happy to collaborate and work with you guys all. So yes, as I, as I said before, from people that know me, you know a cliche expression I like to use that Solmeja is like a life bed for us. So who need to prove worthy of all your trust, of all your, let's say, admiration. And uh, the only thing I beg for us all is to be healthy and keep on working towards this goal of circularity, sustainability, and make profits, make money, but in an honest and sustainable uh, way for us and for the next generation. So thank you all very much and congratulations. Thank, thank you, thank you, Team Salmeya. Congratulations to you and congratulations to all five teams. We know that a bright future awaits for you all. Uh, this is uh, the end of the first uh, local event. Uh, it, it is finished for now, but we will be turning on with next event real soon. Make sure to support uh, winning team from Greece, Salmeya, at the grand finale uh, event on November the 4th. It's the Friday noon exactly central european time on this very channel <clears throat> we begin at noon i said that well uh, as a conclusion i would just say let's keep innovating together goodbye